Okay, hello and welcome to the Year of Speed Plan Camp with Sebastian Obi. My name is Sebastian Obi. If you are just in case you're coming across me for the first time, I'm a digital marketing consultant, but I also love the idea of personal development. So from time to time, I share webinar, I share my experience with regards to personal growth. I share knowledge I've gotten from paid mentorship, from personal experience, generally with the end goal of you know helping you do more and achieve more. Now let's just dive right into it. I want to welcome you to the year of Speed Plan Camp. My name is Sebastian Ubi, like I said earlier. I congratulate you on taking a step in the right direction because the information I will be sharing with you over the next couple of minutes are capable of helping you take a step backward and effectively plan your year. With the end result of helping you hit your goals faster, build better characters, and generally help you achieve more this year. All right? Now, um, see yeah. Before now, a couple of years ago, every new year, just like every other person, I plan, I want to achieve this, I want to achieve that. But I realized that you can't achieve your set goals by just talking about it or by, or by wishing. Wishing does not get the job done. I don't know if you understand. For you to achieve whatever set goals you have in mind, you need to have a strategic plan. You need to have a plan, right? A workable plan. And you also need to back that plan into implementation with massive, massive implementation. So the whole idea behind the year of speed plan camp is to give you um, yardsticks, like it's to give you like guide, practical guide on how you can come up with a workable plan for yourself and hit the road with it. Okay. Now. In this particular plan camp, we are going to be covering evaluation, we'll cover recap, strategic evaluation, limiting factors, growth factors. In uh, chapter two, we'll cover system building. We would also cover counter limiting factors in chapter three and goal setting proper in chapter four. I think I omitted chapter um, chapter three and four, but don't worry, we are, we are definitely going to cover that. I just wanted to include the outline so you have some level of uh, surface knowledge of what we are going to cover. And then during the training proper, like when, when we start going over them, you have some, you, you have a more in-depth knowledge with regards to it. Now let's dive right in. One, chapter one, evaluation. Now in this chapter one, eh, you need to understand that, let me just read it out first. The reason why you need to evaluate your 2022 is because for you to win or succeed in 2023, you need to understand the factors that limited you from doing the most in 2022. You, like it's not ideal that you dive into a new year or you dive into a new season or let's say you are deciding that okay you want to change moving on you want to do so much and you don't evaluate what actually made you hindered you from achieving the so much in the past so the first step towards doing the most or getting the most out of 2023 or a new season is by evaluation strategic evaluation you need to you need to understand what like you need to evaluate right you need to understand what are the factors that actually limited you from doing what you want to do now in the past. The only thing that changes in the new year is the, is, is the calendar. The days are still the same. So if you want to move on to planning, so if you uh, move on to planning without back evaluation, the characters, if you move on, if, if you move on with planning without back evaluating the characters, the friends, the limitations that held you back in 2023, chances are that those limitations are still going to get a hold of you. I don't know if you understand. You need to calm down and evaluate. It's not enough to just write out new plans that you're excited. This thing is going to wear out. So calm down and evaluate strategically. What are the limitations? What held me back? There's nobody that you will see that will tell you that, oh, I don't want to achieve, I don't want to achieve great things. Everybody wants to achieve great plans. So it all boils down to what are the factors that are holding them back or limiting them or stopping them from achieving these great plans for themselves. That's the first thing I need you to understand and cover, evaluation, all right? Now, can they know that I used 2022 here as a, as a point in time? I used 2022 as a point in time. This simply means that if you're watching this plan cap, let's say three or six months into 2023, or nine months, or let's say even in 2024, you can evaluate with your immediate past, with your immediate past months. For example, now let's say you're watching this plan camp in um, April. You refuse to watch it because I'm obviously going to release it in January, or it should be out from January. You're watching it in let's say March or April. It's not wise to start saying you want to start evaluating 2023. I say, who? Why missing out January, February, March? So your evaluation is basically your past, your immediate past, the past three months, the past six months, the past twelve months. So evaluation can be moon based The fact that I'm saying 2022 here does not mean that if you are watching it or you are going through this thing or you decide to go through a change, 
later in 2023 or beyond, you now say, oh, you now start talking about 2022. 2022 is only a point in time because it's relevant as at the point of recording. This is January 2023. So the, the closest past point in time here is 2022. I don't know if you understand. So now, this brings us down to identification of your limiting, or of your, of your growth and um, limiting factors. You see, it, like I said, the first phase is evaluation, evaluation of your past. You need to understand what held you back, right? Number two, you need to understand, you need to be able to identify why evaluating that your past. You need to be able to identify your growth and limiting factors. Now, in simple terms, growth factors basically means factors that help you do more. If you're a person that used to show up on time, you have meetings, you have appointments, you show up on time, that's a growth factor. It's obviously going to help you do so much more. I don't know if you understand. If you're a person that you get things done, you don't procrastinate, it's a growth factor. It's obviously help you do more. If you're a person that, you know, you, you obviously know growth factors, right? Limiting factors are factors that limit you. If you love procrastinating limiting factors, people have missed, even me talking to you, I used to have mad-ass procrastination. I procrastinate like my life depends on it. I enjoy this adrenaline of doing things in dying minutes. But then, I had to work on it. It's a limiting factor. I don't know if you understand. I have to share my own personal experience so you don't, so you don't feel like I'm a perfect person. No. But the point is, we are all you know, identifying that, okay, this thing is not working out for us. We want to do more. I really need to get this thing done to be able to do more. So identify your, your limiting factors. Identify your limiting factors. That's like the next step. Like during evaluation, it's not outside evaluation. You're evaluating to understand two major things, three major things. I said whatever that has happened before now. Number two, identify your growth factors. What factors help you do more? Number three, identify your limiting factors. All right? Um, now, Identification of your growth and limiting factor. In this phase, uh, you need to be brutally honest with yourself about everything that actually limits you. You need to be honest. This is not the time where you want to come and start being defensive. Nobody, they advise you. Now you, they advise yourself. Now advice where you give yourself. Now you better pass within person they advise you. I don't know if you understand. You need to be very, very brutally honest with yourself about every single thing that limits you. See, you probably have the tendency of doing so, so much. I've seen people that have tendencies of doing great things, but they are limited financially, career-wise, because of, because of terrible limiting factors. I don't know if you understand. Limiting factors are deadly. You are procrastinating, you are happy about it. It's deadly. Imagine the kind of things you would have done if you, were, if you are the person that gets things done on time. You, you buy training, you finish it up. You go to classes, you go to school, you take your classes serious. I don't know if you understand. You get a new job, you take it serious. You get a new role as a freelancer, you take it serious. You don't procrastinate. You do so much better. Another book I would advise you to get is Atomic Habits. If you are serious about, you know, this whole personal development thing, get Atomic Habits. Read it cover to cover. That should be like your first tax after now, after the whole takeaway you get from this particular webinar. All right? Now, your limited factors are holding you back. Now is the time to identify and accept them. Before throwing them out of the window. I understand the face of you don't want to. Some people tell you they don't want to confess. Blah, 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 blah. Accept them. You cannot, you cannot solve what you don't identify as a problem. I don't know if you understand. Some people now, people, some people are broke because they feel like depending on their salary is good. People that are breaking away from, let's say now, there are some people that earn salaries that are, you know, really, really big. That are, that are you know. That are okay for them to fulfill their basic need. But if you have an office now that they pay people, uh, let's say 100 and um, let me say 50 50k per month, or let's say, let's say, let's use 50k per month. Obviously, as an adult that is married, 50k per month cannot do, cannot do nada for you. Like if you want to be very, very comfortable, even averagely comfortable, you can't do shit for you. So now, if you have three people working in that particular office, if staff one and staff to feel like ah 50k, I could just manage them now. They don't look at it like it's a problem. If staff three come and say ah this 50k per month no good, they really do new. How can I you know learn a skill, get another job on the side? The person have identified the fact that okay this money is not enough. It's a problem. So the first thing you need to do is identify your problems and accept them. No good, they drag or give excuses. Identify your problem and accept them. When you see them as a problem, you cannot work on throwing them out of the window. We would also do this for the growth factors, but I'm, I'm hitting on the limiting factors because this, limit, this, this, this is like the major problem. Your growth factors are not really a problem because they're helping you do better and excel. 
All right. So the first step is to the first step to evoking a change is wholesome acceptance. While identifying your limiting factors, don't blame anybody. Don't say my brother, or is my mother, my father, I don't that didn't give me enough money, or is my uncle. Nobody owes you shit. Do you understand? You owe everything, every single thing to yourself. So identify your limiting factors and will suddenly accept them. You are a chief procrastinator. Say yes. Put your hand on your chest. You are a chief procrastinator. You have sexual limitations. Accept it. You are not accepting it to, to swim in it. You are accepting it to identify the hormone. This thing no good, and they limit me now. I want to break away from it. I don't know if you understand. So, wholesome acceptance. Now, get the book and buy rule. If you don't have a book and buy rule while watching this, go and get the book and buy rule. While evaluating your year, write down every single trait or characters. Remember, there are two things we want to do here while evaluating. We want to identify our limiting factors, right? And next up, we also want to identify our. Um, we also want to identify our growth factor. So get a book and a buyer. Get a new book, possibly, or an existing book. On one page, write out every single trait. That, there's nobody that is entirely bad. There's nobody that everybody have good and bad. Even That's why even people that do ritual, at least they will enjoy the money now. That's a good part of it. But obviously, they will definitely suffer a whole lot more than the good. But the point I'm trying to make is that there's nothing that don't have good. Every single thing have good and bad. At least 99% of things out there have good and Even fire have good and bad. Fire burns somebody is really bad, you know. But without fire, how are we going to be cooking? I don't know if you get. So get the book and the bio. No matter how much you want to down talk yourself, they are good part of you, right? So identify the good part. The good part are your growth, are the growth factors in your life. Identify them, write them out. If you always get things done on time, write them out. You take your, your classes or training seriously, write them out. To a punctual person, write them out. You're a respectful person, write them out. Write out your growth factors. It's going to help you realize that, okay, you are doing well in some areas of your life, but you also need to fix these other areas so you can, you know, have a very, very, you know, you can, you can, you can do a lot better. So on one part of the book, write them out. You, like I said, your growth factors can be getting things done on time. They can be investing your time, your spare time wisely. They can be reading books. They can be having discipline. I don't know if you understand. Discipline in face of immorality, like sexual limitations. Now, when I talk about sexual limitations, I'm talking about distractions. There's some people that, almost once, once sex is involved, they are distracted. They are heavily, they don't have that discipline to say, okay, now is the time to be serious in my life. Now is not the time to be flexing or catching crews. So when I talk about sexual related distractions, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying you should not have sex if you are due for having sex. I don't know if you understand. But the point I'm trying to make is, if it, if, it, if, it is, if you don't have a control over it, then it's a limitation. If it controls you, you don't have discipline over it. Like, you just did the work. Before you, you are distracted. You are thinking things. You are texting people that are not supposed to be texting. Distraction. So get the book and the bio. Write down the good parts. Every single growth factor you can identify in your life. On one page, on the second page, now start writing out your limiting factors. We are trying to achieve something here. We'll get down to it. Write out your limiting factors. It can be waking up late. It can be short, short-term steam. Now, let me explain what short-term steam means. Short-term steam simply means gin, getting ginger. For example, now, the first week of January, oh man, get ginger. I will do this. I will move this mountain to this. Before you know, second, third week, ginger don't die. That's short-term steam. Short-term steam is majorly fueled by motivation without a proper strategy on how to achieve what you're, what you're motivated about or without discipline. So your limiting factors can be short-term steam. You did ginger ginger before you know your, your enthusiasm are worn out. It can be waking up late. All of you that have terrible sleeping routine, by 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you'll be, you'll be seeing movies or you'll be doing things that are not, that, that are not going to add to your life. By 8 a.m., when you have a work to go to, you now wake up late, you go to the office or go to school or go to wherever you're supposed to go to and start being sluggish for the day. Limiting factor. It can be poor time management. Something that you spend 30 hours doing, you spend two hours. Something that you spend 30 minutes doing, you spend two hours doing, doing it. Like I said, it can be sex, it can be sexual related distractions. It can also be laziness and the list goes on. The, the point is identify them and write them out. Be brutally honest with yourself. Now, now that you have identified your strengths and weaknesses, the weaknesses should give you a sort of clear picture on the reasons why you did not do, why you didn't do as much as you wanted to do in the past. 
Remember, we have not we have not gotten down to goal setting. We are still in identifying what the problem is. Look at goal setting or doing like look at goal setting like a room. You are the room, right? Before you bring in something new, you need to remove the old things or arrange the things that are, that are supposed to be there. If you want to bring in, imagine there's a room, there are already existing baggages, you're not carrying new ones and put inside. It's going to be conflict now. So the idea behind what we are doing here is to evaluate. We are trying to remove what we are supposed to remove or identify what we want to remove and identify the ones that we want to leave. So now that you have identified, identified your strengths and weaknesses, the weaknesses should give you a sort of clear picture. I've said that. So like I said earlier, to truly win this year or in the new season, I keep talking about new season. People can, everybody's inside a new year, new year now that is 12 months, it can be by March that somebody will wake up and say, okay, I want to start doing something reasonable with my life. That's a new season for the person. So it does not necessarily, everybody does not necessarily have to start, you know, planning and executing and doing all the whole being productive from January. People can wake up at different points. I don't know if you understand. So if you truly want to win when you wake up or this year, you need to identify and maintain your strengths, which are your winning factors, and replace your weaknesses, which are your limiting factors. That's the summary of evaluation. Identify your strengths. Be happy about it. Maintain them. Identify your limiting factors. Identify factors you are going to use to replace them and replace them. That's just the idea behind evaluation. All right. But let's be honest. Eh? It's not easy to stop or eradicate or replace your, your weaknesses. It's not easy. It's not easy to just come and say, ah, I want to start waking up early or I want to start getting things done on time. Saying you will stop won't make you stop. Beating yourself up would make you stop. The only third thing that can make you stop or replace your limiting factors are building systems, systems that turn your limiting factors into their opposite traits. See, system building is very, 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 very powerful. In life, system building is very, very powerful. In business, system, you need to have a system, a structure in place. Some people now, they run their businesses January to December. They are not making sales because they don't have a system. If you ask them now when last they advertise, they don't, they don't know. Are you running ads? No. Do you create content? No. Every day they'll come and put dot waste bit status on their WhatsApp. So if you are in, if you are trying to promote your business this year, you should understand that you need a system, a system that brings in lead, lead more like people that are interested in your business, an advertising system, a system for content marketing, a system for sales closing, a system for follow up, a system for retainment of you know customers and lead system. Even in life in school, if you want to come out with a class, you don't just come and say ha me. Akbar, I'll come out with first class. You have a system. I'm going to go to class by this time to this time. I'm going to come back and read by this time to this time. I'm going to hang out with my friends at Shalai by this time to this time. System. So the true way to replace limiting factors is by building a system. I don't know if you understand. That's why when it comes to election, they'll tell you, everybody come and tell you, I want to change the system of things. If when the system of things, when the way things are being run is being changed, when the system is changed automatically, there will be change in how the government is. So system. Now, this brings us to identifying characters that counter your limiting factors. Characters that counter your limiting factors are basically the opposite of your limiting factors. Now, remember, we already have a book that we are working with where we wrote our what? Our growth traits. We also wrote our what? Our limiting factors. Now, here, what we want to do now is that particular page we wrote our limiting factors, the page next to it, or we want to draw a line, divide it, the way we do word and opposite when we were in primary school. I mean, we we'll say on one side word, on the other side opposite. Now divide that page into two. Or you can write it on the next page close to it. I don't have an answer write out that. the opposite of your limiting factors. For example, procrastination, getting things done on time, waking up late, having a proper sleeping routine, and waking up early. Now we we'll sleep early, we wake up early. You don't expect to, to say, eh, I'm making a plate, answer that you're up early. You will now go and be sleeping by 3 a.m. and you expect to wake up by 6 a.m. when you need to be back. So waking up late, having a proper sleeping routine, and waking up early. We are countering those limiting factors now. Sexual distractions, being disciplined. Nobody is a saint, nobody is perfect, but at least you can, you can develop some level of discipline over yourself. Poor money management, being accountable with my expenses. Some of us that will blow money like we own CBN. 
that can also be a limiting factor. Because if you are earning 200,000 a month as a single person that you are not married and you are spending 200,000 at the end, everything for that same month on your on yourself, then there's a problem. If you are earning 1 million per month and you are spending all that 1 million on yourself, there's a problem. Even if 100 million you didn't make, if you are spending all that money, there's a problem. So you need to understand, and it's a problem. Since it's a problem, the solution is proper financial management. So if you spend money anyhow, the solution can be being accountable with your finances and documenting your expenses. That's what I do when, anytime I feel like I'm spending too much. So when I look at my expenses list, I'm like, all these things are not necessary, and I start removing them. I don't know if you get. So counters are basically the opposite of your limiting factor. Remember, when we talked about accepting our limiting factor, we didn't say we want to accept them so we can do more. We don't say we will accept them, we will continue the play. We say we will accept them, so we know that, okay, this is our problem, and this is how we are going to solve it. So counters is where you solve your limiting factor. So identify them and note them down on the, on the page next to the page you wrote your limiting factors. If you are not doing these things, go and get a book and buy it and do them. The idea behind you, you watching this lecture guide or you watching this webinar is not for you, it's, it's not for you to just be entertained and be inspired. Obviously, you are going to be inspired and entertained, but... Do something with it. Get a book and buy it. You should have written out three things now. You should be you should, you should be on the step to writing the thought. Number one, your limiting factors. Your growth factors, sorry. Number two, your limiting factors. Number three, that's page three. The counters to your limiting factors. Do you understand? And don't rush. Don't say, eh, I don't have any growth factor. Or I don't have any limiting factor. Calm down and think. There's nobody that don't have growth and limiting factors. On this earth, there's nobody. You get the only thing is that some people that have built themselves so well, their limiting factors are very, very small, or they have proper discipline, very staunch discipline to control their limiting factors. So, write out your growth factors. Don't say there's nothing good about you, there are plenty of things good about you. Now, you know, just the same. Write out your growth factors, write out your limiting factors, and now write out the counters to your limiting factors. Right now, system building. Now that you fully understand your limiting factors and you have an idea. You have an idea of what you should actually of, of what you actually want to replace them with. It's time to build a system that helps you make a habit out of them. Now, eh, the easiest way for you to actually conquer your limiting factors is making a habit out of them. Some of your growth factors, if you observe clear carefully, but these particular growth factors, you know, you are doing them unconsciously. Somebody that is punctual is not trying to be punctual. The person obviously can be trying to maintain it, but the person is doing it with, with less stress because it's a growth factor. That's what the person is already used to. So people now, if you if you live with them for one week, two weeks, your life would even change. I don't know if you, like, you see some people, if you live with them, the way they behave, they wake up early, they don't, like, in the morning, they don't, they try to meditate. You know, there's a particular very nice life pattern that they're living. That's helping them do so much more. If you ask them, they'll tell you they're used to it. Some people now they are very very careful with their diet. They are used to it. So they they don't they don't they don't take soda. They don't eat when it's past seven. They take a lot of water. They are fit, you know. They are used to it. So they are, they are used to it now because it's already a habit for them. So what we want to do now is to replace, is to make those counters a habit. That is the counters, the opposite of our limiting factor, a habit. And to do that, we need to ensure that there's a system in place that helps us do it. I don't know if you understand. So that's basically what we are going to do here. Now, here are some basic but important guides to note about placing a system that helps you turn your counterfactors into habits. Number one, be clear about what you want to change. Be very, very clear. You procrastinate. You want to start getting things done on time. No time. Understand that it will not be easy. It's not going to be easy. You guys used to waking up anyhow, um, spending money like Pablo, investor. You don't want to come and start being careful with your finances. It's not going to be easy. But it's going to be worth it. Your limiting factors on the long run will ruin you. There are people that you there are older people that if you look at them, eh, you will know that this person had a lot of potentials when the person was when the person was very, very young. Youthfulness is a sting. If you are in your you are in your 18s or you are in your 20s, you are in your 30s, 40s, it's a sting. Oh. In the sense that it will still pass. No matter is what you did then with it. So, you know, it's not easy causing a change. I have to be very, very honest with you. I'm not coming here to just give you motivation. I want to give you practical knowledge. It's not easy bringing about a change. I don't know, but what motivates me to stick to 
um, my counters is the fact that my limiting factors can ruin me. Your limiting factors can ruin you. But your counter on the long run is going to help you do so much more in life. You understand? So it's not easy, but it's worth it. Now, agree that you will resolutely commit to changing it. 100%. If you say you want to stop procrastinating, you are resolute about it. If you say you want to cut down on sexual um, distractions, you are resolute about it. If you say you want to stop spending anyhow, you are resolute about it. If you say you want to start investing time in things that are going to give you money, in a business or in a, or in a digital skill, you are resolute about it. If you buy a course, you go finish them. You know, go take video one, you can't go sleep or go to watch Z World. You are resolute. Like, when I mean, re you are, like, your mind is made up. That moment, I want to change this thing about me. That's like number one. Number two, consciously and avoid the and consciously avoid and resist the littlest urge to give in to the weaknesses you are trying to counter. If you say you want to counter this limiting factor, avoid it. You will not say that you want to let, let's say now your limiting factor is obesity. You are obese or you are not physically fit. One of your one of your growth plan, one of your goals for this 2023 and beyond is to be fit. You want to be fit, you want to have abs, look okay, you know, have a good body, have a banging body. Your gym coach now tell you stop, don't eat by after seven. Take light food in the night, maybe cereals or fruits, and you know, a little protein on the side. Don't eat this, don't eat that. You that you are trying to stay fit, let's say you live alone, you now go and buy fufu and aku and soup and keep in the fridge, or you want to buy you goat, or you buy you buy you buy carton of soda, you not tell yourself it's for visitors. Like the temptations are there now, obviously, you are going to fall into it. So resist the little less urge to shalaye, resist it. If you tell yourself that you want that's why in number one we talked about being resolute. It's not by force to bring about a change. If you say you want just the chill, you want to live life as the good, that's good. If you say you want to be resolute about changing and doing better, you need to, you know, commit to it. Avoid the little less urge to give in to your weaknesses. Number three, delegate tasks surrounding the counter you are trying to replace the weakness with. For example, if you tell yourself that you want to be waking up early, the tax you can delegate can be doing everything you have to do on or before 9. Like by 9 or before 9 o'clock, that is 9 p.m. in the night, or let's say 10 p.m. if you're a very, very busy person. You get. Or 11 p.m., depending on your sleeping routine. So people are used to sleeping 6 hours a day or less than that. Or sorry, 6 hours a day, 5 hours a day, 6 hours a day. So people, they can't, they're used to sleeping 7 or 8 hours. Just Calculate it that way in a way that you, that you can you can have a very very sound sleep and still wake up good enough to go about your daily activities. So if waking up early now is one is one thing you want to get done, you can delegate timing. Tell yourself that you sleep by nine. Every single thing you are going to do is going to finish by nine. You can now have a one hour miscellaneous. So bad as a bad, if you didn't finish by nine, you can finish by ten. If you sleep by ten, I wake up by five. I feel like that's enough sleep time for a grown adult. You get it can be more sure. Now, let me give another example. If you say, if you tell yourself that your goal this year is to be financially independent, like you do not want to have a money problem, you can delegate tax. Number one tax now can be researching. Obviously, if you want to make money, there are two ways to make money: that online, online or offline. Online with digital skills, not with Yahoo. What you want to say, I tell you, you want to learn Yahoo. You can make a lot of money. You can attain true financial freedom with digital skills. So you can number one can be researching. Tell yourself, okay, do you want to do? Do you want to go into online marketing, online businesses, or you want to do offline? You, um, your tax tool now can be if it's online. What courses do you want to learn? What what area do you want to go into? Do you want to go into affiliate marketing? Do you want to start coding? Do you want to go into graphic designing? Do you want to go into digital marketing? Do you want to go into e-commerce? You want to go into paid traffic? That's Facebook and Instagram ad. Decide the one you want to do. Research. Either. You know, reach out to people that you feel like are already in this field. Decide the one that you want to do. I love every single thing about online marketing, but I don't think I can do anything about coding because I feel like coding is stressful. I don't know if you understand. I prefer digital marketing, pay traffic, Facebook and Instagram ad, landing page and sales funnel without the coding part. You, you get and stuff like that. So delegate tasks 
So number three now can be you, you um, number two can be researching, number three can be you getting a course, number four can be you taking that course. You tell yourself that in one week or two weeks, depending on the volume of the course, you're going to finish. Number five can be you launching out. So delegate tax. Don't just say, I want to do this and go and sleep. Delegate tax, all right? Now, number four, track your progress. Like I said before now, you should have a journal. If you want to be serious with your life, get a journal. Get a journal where you're going to write all these things down. Be tracking your progress. In go setting, we are going to cover tracking progress properly, Sha. Now, number five, always speak kind words to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Speak kind words to yourself. Don't talk down on yourself. If you talk down on yourself, you, you are killing your self-esteem as a person. And it's no good. Be kind, speak kind words to yourself. Tell yourself you are the greatest because you can actually be the greatest if you want to be. Tell yourself you can get this thing done. You are a chief procrastinator. You can be a chief executionist. You de execute. You de deliver. Like see Ronaldo. Like Ibro, man. You de execute. If you want to do this thing, you get it done. You will not start procrastinating. Speak kind words to yourself. Words and power. There was a, there was a seminar I, I, I attended. And the chief speaker told us something. He said, God created the earth, the heaven and the earth, with words. If you are a Christian, you can go and read Genesis. God created the heaven and the earth with words, right? Um, um, Babala was like people that do all these traditional one or two incantations. They evoke or they, or they make a seal or command powers with words. I'm sure there's also a place in Islam where you can use words to get things done. So the point I'm trying to make is that your words are very, very powerful. Don't go and be talking anyhow about yourself. Or don't be accepting anyhow talk about yourself. The same time you say you cannot make it in life, you go and start crying. Instead of you to tell you to rebook it and give yourself reasons why you can make it in life and get down to work. Somebody tell you that you're lazy or you're this. If somebody is being honest, there's a difference when somebody is constructively criticizing you and when somebody is insulting you, or talking down on you. So be kind to yourself. Speak kind words to yourself and only accept kind words to yourself. All right? Now, the staying impossible mantra. The truth is that you will fail at some point or fall out. That's the truth. Life is full of ups. Life is like an, an up and down movement. At some point, you fail. At some point, you would fall. You're trying to get this thing done. You fall. You fail at it. But understand that it is part of the process, and the only way to get by is by staying impossible. You see, it takes, I think, 60 days. Psychologists say it, it takes 60 days to build a character or to form a habit. So if you are doing something consistently, you get, get you will definitely get to that phase where it will be so hard. But if you conquer that phase, eh, you get to the point where it becomes very, very easy. I don't know if you understand. Just remember when, when, when we were still in school, when you were in school, primary school, secondary school, there are some subjects that the first time you'll be trying to you know, learn them or you know, master them. It's going to be hard, right? It's going to look like it, 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 the thing cannot enter your head. But when you, when you stay consistent over time, it becomes very, very easy for you. So that's the same way with building habits. Sometimes it's not going to be easy. Sometimes you feel, but just stay consistent. 60 days, give yourself 60 days. That's like two, three months. You're going to form a habit out of that particular thing. And this does not mean that you start seeing, like, if you start now, within one month, self, you're going to start being feeling comfortable with the whole thing. So people, so people, it doesn't take up to 60 days for them to form a, but for them to form a habit out of something. The point is just stay consistent. Stay impossible when you get stuff. Don't back out. All right? Um, now that you fully understand how to evaluate, how to evaluate, identify your limiting and growth factors, and you also have an idea of what to replace them with, you also have an understanding of how to put a system in place that helps you achieve the replacement. We are going to dive right into goal setting proper. Um, goal setting and execution basically means the acts of having a clear mental picture of what you hope to achieve, either inbound time or outbound time. This basically means that within a given time frame or within a freelance time frame, so goal setting, you are writing it down. I want to do this, that, that, that. You have a mental picture. See, eh? the dream is free. The hustle is sold separately. Meaning that if you want to make 100 million this year, it's easy to dream it, Abby. But what is going to take you from dreaming to making that 100 million is the hustle based on your business. I'm not saying you're going to start having no realistic goals. Though. I'll give you 100 million as an example. If you that have not made your first... 100k, you say you want to make 100 million this year. Are you savvy? 
But I'm giving you an example, right? Realistic goals. Now, since the dream is free, don't limit yourself. Have a mental picture. See, there's a way you have a very, very strong mental picture of the goals that you want to achieve that not achieving those goals is impossible. It's impossible for you not to achieve it. You eventually hit it by God's grace. So have a very, very proper mental picture of what you want to, of what you hope to achieve within a given time frame or outbound. That is, you don't, you're not putting the time frame on it, but you know you want to achieve this thing this year or you want to achieve this thing as soon as possible. All right? Now, here is a guide on how to go about goal setting. Number one, have a vision for the year. Be very, very clear on what you want to achieve. Have a long and short-term priority list that cut across finances. I see. I feel like every adult should have a plan or have a clear-cut plan that cut across finances, how you can save and build wealth, career and business, how to excel at whatever career path you choose or whatever business model you're into. Number three, spirituality. Whatever you worship, how to be stronger in it. If you're a Christian, how to, obviously, like, nobody is a saint and it's not easy maintaining spirituality in the contemporary society, but you can at least try and put in the work. It's a difference when you are trying and when you are just doing it any other way you go. I don't know if you understand. Try. Strive. I don't know if you understand. And then fourth, relationships. Relationships doesn't necessarily have to be romantic relationship with people i don't know if you understand with relationships eh, you can you can hit multiple deals by just having a proper and cordial relationship a nice relationship with people i don't know if you understand network if you don't have friends or you don't have people that push you to do better you can achieve that by networking i don't know if you understand so have a proper and effective relationship with people so every single adult should have a plan that cuts across finances career and business, spirituality, and relationships. It can be more. Now, decide your top priority. Remember, we have, we have done the first one, evaluation. We wrote out our limiting factors. We wrote out our growth factors. We wrote out our counter factors. Now, what, what you need to start doing is to, is to decide. Yeah, you want to write out your goals, the short term and the long term, right? You want to write out every single thing. You want to make them end from your business, right, Tam? You want to achieve 100 followers on social media, write it. You want to do this. You want to take this professional exam. You want to do this and that, 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 that. You write out all this, your plan. You break them into short-term and long-term. Short-term plan plans are plans that you can achieve within the next two to six months. One to six months, short-term. Long-term plans are any plan above six months. It can be seven months, eight months, nine months, ten months, long-term. But you can decide what your long-term or short-term plan is. I just give you what mine is, right? So that's basically it. Now write them out. Secondly, decide your top priorities. You cannot achieve every single thing at the same time. Uh -uh. You are not a robot now. Prioritize. For example, go to that your short-term plan. Tell, tell yourself that you want to focus on doing the first three things or the first four things. You can't do everything. Focus. It's better you focus on achieving two things. You achieve them faster so you can move on to the next two things than trying to achieve four things at a time. Let me give you an example. If, let's say now, eh, you own a poultry, it's easier to try to chase one fowl or two fowl. It's not easy trying to chase two fowl. I'm just giving you an example because sometimes people will say, oh, they can't just do just one thing. You can't say you want to do only one thing. So people, like, that's their mantra. But even if you are a multi-taxer, you say you do plenty of things at the same time, you have ten hands. You cannot do everything at the same time. So prioritize. You get pick out the top two, three things. Priority you is not that you have uh, scaling up your business and uh, traveling to Dubai with your fiance or with your wife or your husband. You not say traveling to Dubai with your fiance is more important than scaling up your business. No, except you're traveling to Dubai for a business meeting. So have your get your priorities very very strict. So prioritize. Decide what your priorities are. And then fit them into Q1 or the next available Q. Now, when it comes to goal setting, there are different ways to go about it. You can plan monthly or you can plan quarterly. For example, inside a year, year is made up of 12 months. Q1 is January to March. January, February, March, Q1. April, May, June, Q2. June, July, August, Q3. 
um, September, October, November, Q4. My calculation is right. January, February, March, Q1. April, May, June, Q2. July, August, September, Q3. October, November, December, Q4. Yeah, there are four quarters. I don't know if you understand of the year. You can also divide yours the way um, budgeting and planning people do it. That's Q1 and Q2. That's first half of the year and second half of the year. But I always advise you do four quarters so you can have you know realistic plans. You can fit them in. So fit your priorities into Q1. For example, if you are doing, if you are getting this thing done now, that like there is January that I'm recording this thing. Your Q1 is going to be January, February, March. If you are watching this thing in March, your Q2 is going to be an April, May, June. So fit also your priority list into the next available quarter. Um, number four, break them into monthly goals. Break them into monthly goals. You are not just fitting them into the Q1 to go and see. Break them into monthly goals. Inside of your priority list, they should still be on that priority list again. Break them into monthly goals. All right? And then break them into weekly tasks. You said this monthly and weekly tax, you might not be able to do it. For example, now, if you want to do, you want to, uh, you want to work on your, your, on your weight. So let's say you want to be physically fit. You want to um, be rich doing network marketing or digital marketing. You want to get an apartment and furnish it. You, you want to plan for the next six months, Abby. You can't do all these things in January, February, March. Inside the fitness, you can say January, you want, to, you want to work on your fitness and you want to work on researching the particular digital skill you want to settle for. So you can break your fitness into January week one. You are going to decide the gym you want to work out in or you're going to decide if you want to do outdoor, indoor workout. Week two, you get started. Week three, you start working on your diet. I don't know if you understand. Break it down. If it's going into digital skill or making money online, that's your own. You can tell yourself that week one, you're going to research and decide the particular digital skill you're going to. Week two, you look for a dependable mentor or teacher. Week three, you work towards getting the money or, fun, or getting the course. That's if you already have the money before you get started. So even inside your priority list, you need to still break them down. So what the point I'm trying to make is you cannot start breaking down what you are going to do when you get an apartment, when you have not even gotten the money, when you have not even gotten the skill that will give you the money to get the apartment. So the point is, inside your priority list, you bring them out and start breaking them down when it's time. For example, you want to start out with getting a digital skill and working out. It's time for it now. You can start breaking it down in two weeks and then leave the other ones. When it's time, when you are done with, when that time to do them come, you also bring them up and break them into weeks, into weekly plan. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, number six, strive not to fall out. This is very, very important. This is also, roughly, this is also you know, talking about it's also, you know, moving about the whole um, staying impossible mantra. All these things are not going to be easy. If you're setting your goals, you're going to be super excited. Well, it's not going to be easy. But remember, your limiting factors can ruin you on the long run. But your growth factors or your counter factors can help you do so much more. So, so strive not to fall out. Um, in conclusion, don't be static or fixed with your plans. Be dynamic. For example, now you can decide that you want to plan to, let's say now you are into business, you want to plan to make 100k in profit this month. It could be that even after doing all you, all you have to do or all you feel like you are responsible for doing to get that result, you don't achieve it. When this happens, don't feel bad. Always be ready at any point to drop a new plan. Do you understand? Stay impossible. See, eh? Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Go and get that book. I've talked about two books, Atomic Habit. I don't want to talk about too many books. I don't want to bore you out. I want to give you something that is precise, so you run with it. Get, get tough time. If you're a weak person or you're a feeble person, get tough times don't last, but tough, but tough people do. You need to stay tough. Go and look at people that have made it in life. In, interview them. There's no way that... Like, see, if you interview rich people, there are some kind of struggles that they will talk about that even you or person will be saying to us he won't make money, go here and go fear. Legal money, I'm not talking about dirty money, legal money. People tell you what they went through. Even you, you are going to say that one more, you never even start. So stay tough. When you fall out of your plan, be ready to drop a new plan. Obviously, there's a place for emotions. You know, there is a say you don't plan general, you don't plan heaven and earth. 
you can't put in the work, it does it doesn't work out. Obviously, cry if you want to cry. That's how you feel like resist your emotions. Um, play games if you if you feel like that's how you want to release your emotions. But shall I don't release emotions in ways that you get back to you. If you say because your plan don't work, you want to go and spend this more money you have and club and party all night and have, have hangover for like one week. Now you still lose though. So you can pour out your emotions in ways that are at least held it to a point. But get back. The most important thing should be you getting back. When you fall down, dust yourself. Cry or you want to cry. Dust yourself and pick yourself up. Don't cry or you want to cry and stay on the ground. So the idea behind planning is not to desperately fit into it or fit your plans and say in a must. I must make 100 million by March this year. I must do this. I must move into this apartment by this. No. I don't know if you understand. It's to help you use it, use it as, a, as a yardstick to easily manifest your vision and keep you up and doing. And also, leverage technology too. When I used to have issues with expenses, everybody have issues with expenses though, because sometimes you still double into spending anyhow. But there's one app that has stood out for me, Money Lover. Go and instill the app. Just type up Money Lover on your, on your app store. If you're using an iPhone, Go to your iOS store and type up Money Lover. If you're using an Android, go to your Play Store and type up Money Lover. It's an app. Instill the app. The app helps you track your daily expenses. You need to also be disciplined. If you get the app, it's not the one that you spend money, you will not go and write it or record it. You cannot keep proper tracking. So every expenses you sometimes I'm very, very busy at the end of the day. It's not every day I keep to it, but at least most of the time I really, really try my best to keep to tracking my expenses. You can also do the same. Because Having an issue with money with money does not mean that you are very, very rich. There are poor people that have issues. I feel like poor people even have more issues with money than rich people. You get. So, you can, you can be making 100k a month and still have a money problem. You can be making 50k a month, even 20k and still have a money problem. Money problem does not have to do with the amount of money you are seeing. It's about you. So, even if you don't say, eh, I'm not even making this money now. Nah. I'm making what I'm making is not so much. From that thing that you're thinking is not so much, you can make something good enough. But if you don't know how to manage the money, my, my darling, you will not see anything. So, you can download the app, Money Lover. Also, if you have an issue with, you don't have what to write down your planning, or you do, you feel like you don't want to be using book, you can download the app to do list planner. There's an app called List Planner. Sorry, to do list. It's an app. There are different different apps that can help you do this. So every day, every every morning, you wake up, you see your prayers, you meditate. Meditation is also very very important. It helps you connect with yourself. Don't go about your day. You just wake up. First thing we, that you, you do is just to go and drag your phone and start pressing. It's a gota behavior. Wake up. Pray. If you say you don't believe in anything, come sit down and meditate on whatever you believe in. Whatever that you think is giving you life. Sit down and meditate. You get. But if you, like after prayers, meditate. Even if it's 10 minutes, just sit down. Don't, you know, play unnecessary music. Just sit down. Play sounds. Or just sit down and meditate. Understand, sink deeper into yourself. Think about yourself. If you if you, if you don't know what to med meditate about, think about yourself, think about your life, think about where you want to get to. Manifest gratitude. Think about the good things that, that, that you have you know witnessed. Manifest gratitude so you can attract more. You get. So that's basically that. Leverage, te leverage techno technology tools. Money lover can help you manage your finances. This planner can help you plan. Sorry, to do list. There are a lot of them. Research. I learned about money lover and, and to do list. Okay, money lover. I, I heard about this in a, in a um, paid mentorship cycle I was in. They, you know, showed us the app. You know, I encourage us to use it. And since then, I've been using it, and you know, it has been helping me to do this. I research it by myself. So there are also other apps you can research. You can even research better apps. You know, so that's basically it. Um, so create a blue create a blueprint from all you have just learned and run with it. Execution remains the master key to seeing results. You remember, remember, it's not by knowing everything. You can know everything if you don't execute. You not see shit. So execution remains the master key to seeing results. So create a blueprint from every single thing you have just learned and run with it. Get started with implementing and executing. Do reach out with questions if you go, if you've got any. I. I, I'm, I, I put together every single thing, the training, the slide, even the recording for free because I don't want to put a price. Normally, I don't hold free trainings because I feel like people don't value free things. But the fact that you're getting this for free, please, run with it. Don't think that it's not worth anything. This is me putting together my experience and paid cycles I've been in. 
paid personal development cycles that I paid with my money. I'm giving you most of these things. All of them, every single thing I gave you is for free. So, wrong with it. Execute. So you can see results and do better this year. It's not for me, it's for yourself. I'll just be happy that if you, at the most that will happen is you reach out to me, ah, this particular thing, I was able to do this, 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 and that. I'll be very, 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 very happy with you that, okay, you implemented every single thing I've shared for over, I think, 40 minutes or there about to 30, 30 something minutes and you're seeing results. I'll be happy. Well, you, you are going to do yourself the major good. So, execute, execute, execute. Do reach out with questions if you've got any. I'm looking forward to getting amazing and heartwarming feedbacks from those who will run with all um, we have just covered. Um, cheers to your continual growth. An all-round amazing... Uh, cheers to your continual growth. I wish an all-round amazing 2023. I am strongly rooting for you and the manifestation of all you hope to be. Thank you so much for staying pure to this point. Like I said, my name is Sebastian Ubi. I'm a digital marketing consultant. I, I'm just hoping that every single thing you have gotten here is going to help you do so much this year and beyond. I'm looking forward to hearing your testimonies and reviews.